Hi, this is Darren Lyle. Well, we've started on the mouth down here. Here it is inside the head. Um, what we need to do now is work on the tongue. And for the tongue, we're just going to extrude a couple of faces down here, up and into the mouth and toward the teeth. Let me switch to face mode here, and let me try and figure out what number of faces we're going to need. If we begin with these here, and I think that'll probably work. Let's begin with these faces right down here. And I'm going to go back to my character screen layout here. And what I want to do is extrude these up and forward toward where the teeth are going to be, but not all the way there. Um, the teeth, I think, are going to come out of these faces here, or at least the gums are, and then we'll place the teeth in them. So for now, let's go ahead and select these faces and press E, and I'll just extrude up a bit. Now, I do have the subdivision surface modifier turned on, and I'm going to leave it on for this particular one because I kind of like to see how it's going to look uh, smooth or curved here. All right, so I've brought that up. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to hit E and extrude up, and I'll bring this forward some and rotate it a bit, kind of like that. And now we can see kind of the shape of the tongue happening here. Now my 3D cursor appears to still be in the center of the grid, so I'll just hit the period key to move the pivot point of these selected faces to that 3D cursor, and then I'll hit S and X and move them in just a bit. There we go. And then I'll hit E again and extrude forward again like this and maybe bring it down a bit. This time again I'll hit S and X over here in the front view and scale that in a bit. And so now we're beginning to get a bit of a tongue-like shape there. Um, I'm gonna select this edge and go back to having my pivot point at the median point by pressing control comma and I'll just scale out a bit like this there we go maybe rotate it some move it down so I'm just trying to adjust the edges so we get kind of a tongue shape here and I'll pull it down a bit like that okay so I think we've got what looks a bit like a tongue. Now, we can do more adjusting on this in the future, but I think that's a good position for it right now. All right, let's think about the teeth and the gums. So let me go back over here to the default view, and if we, we can kind of go in here and look at the tongue here, there it is. Yeah, it looks like I could do a little bit of uh, point pulling or pulling some edges around down here just to curve the front of the tongue a little bit. There we go. Now for the teeth and the gums we're gonna have to get rid of the head for a minute or two so we can see inside the mouth. To do that I can split off the inside of the mouth here at one of these edges. Let's say I split it off Oh, it's looking a little ugly in here, right there, too. But for now, why don't we split this out at this edge right here? So you can really choose just about any edge. I think I'll go ahead and go with this one here. And then I'll press Control e to bring up the Edges menu. And we can choose Edge Split right here. And that will now break that off from the rest of the object. If I hover over the interior of the mouth now, say one of these edges, and I press the L key, it'll select all the linked components of that object. And you can see that there is the mouth selected on its own. So what let's do is let's actually, instead of selecting the mouth, let's select the head and press H for hide. Now we can see just this piece on its own. Now, I'm going to need to create the gums probably with these faces here. So this maybe would be the gums, the outline of the gums. 
and maybe these here, let's say. So these are where the teeth are going to fit into. But first we need to extrude these down a bit. All right, so let's go back to that character view here. And there it is. Actually, I think now that I look at this, I need to add an extra face right here. There we go. I think that matches up pretty well. So what I want to do now, and I'm going to turn off the subdivision surface modifier for this particular part of the process. There we go. And what I want to do is with these selected, I want to hit the E key for extrude, and I'm going to click. And now I'm going to scale in the Z axis, so S and Z, and scale down. And see how they're beginning to flatten out like that? That's what I want, but I don't want them to go all the way to the point where they touch. There we go. That's what I want. Just almost there. Now what we can do is come in here and select these individually now. So I'm going to come in here, I'll deselect these, and I want to select these just individually, just the top row now. There we go. And I'll go back here, and I'm going to move this back up just a little bit to where they probably should be, maybe right in there. And then I'm going to tumble around and select this bottom row. And move these down just a little bit as well. Something like this. This may even need to go down here. We'll see. All right, so now here's our gums. I'm going to turn the subdivision surface modifier back on now. And let's take a look at it. There they are. I'm going to try and zoom in here. It's kind of hard to see inside here. But you can see the gums in there. One of the difficulties for this is getting them close enough up to the lips. Um, and it looks like I probably didn't get them wide enough, too. I'm going to want to select these and move them out some. But that's okay. We can do that. Now, oftentimes when creating teeth for cartoon characters, all we really need is just kind of a half cylinder. Here, let me uh, switch over to an image here. And you can kind of see that his teeth are just, they're all one piece. Um, they've got little ridges in them, and that's fine. We might be able to add some of that, but it's really just a, a cylinder that's been placed in the mouth there. So let's see what we can do with that. I'm going to begin over in a new layer here, in layer 2. And let's just start creating a cylinder. So I'll come over here to the Create tab. I'll click Cylinder. For the number of sides of this cylinder, I don't think we need 32. Well, if we had 32, half of that is 16, and that would be then 8 teeth on each side. Yeah, actually, why don't we go with 32, and let's see how this works. I don't need a cap fill on this. I don't need a top and bottom of the cylinder, so I can come over here to cap fill and change it from in-gun to nothing. And now what I'd need to do is split this in half. So if I switch to face mode, then I can select, um, say, this face, and then control click this face on the other side, and that will select everything in between those two selections. And I'll just hit X to delete and choose faces. Now, let's scale this in the Z. And there is maybe the beginnings of our teeth. Now it needs some thickness to it, so to do that, I'll just come over here to the Add Modifiers menu and I'll choose Solidify. Let's just use that. I'll click and drag in the Thickness field and that'll just increase the thickness a little bit like that. That looks good. And then I'll click Apply. Now I don't think I want to leave it um, unsmoothed like this, although it looks pretty good. It doesn't look too bad. I think I'm going to go ahead and try and add a subdivision surface modifier here. And I'll go ahead and increase the views to 2. 
I will come over to the Tools panel over here and go to the Tools tab and click on Smooth Shading and that will smooth that up some. Now I'm going to tab into Edit Mode and add a few edge loops to tighten up these edges. Um, maybe add an edge loop right up here like that. Now I think I can leave it so they're fairly sharp down at the bottom here. But what I could do is let's test adding a groove in here. What I could do is maybe select this edge and then press Control E and I can choose bevel or you can always use the shortcut key of Control B. But I'll choose bevel and then I'll drag out just a little bit like that. We can always add a segment to it like that. And then if I select this one edge right there and scale in just a little, see what happens. Yeah, that gives us kind of a little crease in the tooth there. So let's try that on some others here. I'm going to try it with these here. And let's try this. I'm going to go ahead and select all those. I'm going to switch my pivot point to um, individual origins, like that. And then I'll press Control B and drag out just a little bit, like, I don't know, something like that. Now I need to go through and select each one of these edges. There we go. And now with individual origins still on, I'll hit the S key to scale in just a smidge. And let's see how that works. I think it gives just the hint of teeth there. And that's all I really need. Yeah, so I think I'm going to go ahead and do that for the other side over here. Then in the next video, we'll work on placing these in the gums. So I'll see you then. If you'd like to learn more about Blender, then join me for my Blender Scene Creation course. In it, we'll create this animated scene of a mech descending into an underground tomb. As we go, you'll be introduced to Blender's modeling tool set as we build the mech character and the environment. We'll talk about manipulating objects, the difference between object mode and edit mode, and as we begin modeling the mech, we'll discuss more advanced topics like cutting one 3D object with another using booleans. We'll talk about object origins and parenting, creating geometry with the bridge tool, and creating tubes or pipes with Bezier curves. We'll create the elements of the environment, the pillars, the walls, and we'll add more detailed scene elements along the way. Once the modeling is complete, we'll talk about UV mapping what it is, why it's needed, and how Blender's UV mapping toolset can help you UV map your 3D objects quickly and efficiently. We'll take a look at Blender's Cycles Render Engine as we add the materials for the mech and the environment. We'll use the free open source image editing program GIMP to prepare and edit our textures and apply them to the 3D models in the environment and on the mech. Ultimately, we'll want our character to move so we'll go over preparing the character for rigging, creating the armature, and how to set up an advanced foot roll rig. We'll create custom shapes and make sure all our controls are parented and organized, ready for animating. We'll begin animating our character flying into the scene and dropping to the ground. We'll use Blender's graph editor and dope sheet to adjust the timing, and we'll talk about keyframing and tangents as well. Once our scene is complete and we've animated the character, we'll do some final tweaks to the lighting, as well as have some fun creating a jet flame effect for our mech's jetpack. And in the end, we'll render out the animation and export a movie file. Bringing an animated scene to life is an amazing process. And once you know how to do it, you can bring any of your ideas to life. So join me for Blender Scene Creation. Learn more at DarrenLyle.com.